It was the hand of God that brought you here for purpose. An apostolic people is not one person or two people going. An apostolic is all of us going. The apostolic means a people that have taken the gospel and they go with the gospel. Sometimes you go by giving finance. Sometimes you go by sending your trailer or your car. Generosity is key in this season. Great faith that's required and great sacrifice that's required. He wants to grow community like he's never grown before. Deep covenantal relationships. God just shining a light on your life groups. Lighthouse, don't forget. Don't forget, keep contending, keep pushing through, keep fighting, keep praying, keep having communion, keep in fellowship. And how do we fight? We fight on our knees. We fight in prayer. You'll fight for the supernatural. Seeing salvations day after day after day after day in the city. You are a lampstand in the city, in this nation, and in the nations of the world. Get ready to be that apostolic people. Good morning, Lara Church. This is where you go, yeah! <laughs> guys, you, I want to tell you guys something. You are in for a treat this morning. And not because of me or what I'm going to say, but man, there's the Holy Spirit has something for you guys here this morning. And I want you to be expectant. I believe so strongly that I, as I was preparing during this week, that you are not going to walk out here the same. You are not. So if you are here for the very first time here at Lighthouse Church, welcome. It's great having you here. We love making a fuss about our first time visitors because there's always that potential that you might join us become part of the family. Okay. And also, if you don't know me, I'm, I'm the loud one. My name is Philip. Uh, I, I like talking and I like talking loud. That's why I nearly walked up to you without the mic. Luckily, Mo was there helping me. But uh, one, of, one of the things that I, that I, that I do here is I oversee the, the, the Fight Club Ministry and, and Lighter School of Ministry. But I want to tell you guys that I'm also married to a lovely lady. Uh, her name is Letty, and we have four boys. Um, Toby, Toby and Jossie, there they are. Uh, that's not them, by the way. That's just a picture of them. So, um, but man, and our house is loud and it's busy. Why? Because there's life. There's life in it. There are days, guys, let's be honest. I sit and I say, like, you help. And, and, and some of your parents know, those of you that don't have kids yet, don't phone me in 10 minutes. <laughs> However, it's excited for me this morning, guys. I'm going to share something about, it's, it's the last week of the foundation series. This is where you go, oh, oh. But it's week eight and it is amazing. What I'm about to share with you this morning is amazing because I'm not sharing to you about a it or a the or a something. I'm sharing to you about a person, the person of the Holy Spirit. And it is actually quite to an extent sad because in some churches, not this one, in some churches, a lot of people actually ignore him completely. He's sometimes the most ignored person on a Sunday, or even in our, in our own walk, in our, in our own lives as Christians. But yet, Lighthouse Church, we, we do the lights, we do the atmosphere, we get things ready, but we are very, very careful when it comes to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Very careful. Because even though the Holy Spirit is gentle, He's kind, He's our comforter, He is extremely powerful. He is God. He is God. And the thing is, we can set up, like I say, about the atmosphere, but because we are so, so, so focused on the presence, it's because when you leave here, you leave the atmosphere behind, but you take the presence with you. And that is my prayer for you guys this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful privilege. Man, we, we speak about the Holy Spirit here this morning. And I pray, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. I pray, Lord, you, you are the one that brings revelation. You are the one that, that yeah, just, just makes salvation possible for us. And I pray, Lord, that that will even be evident here this morning. I pray, Lord, that whatever is from Philip, it will fall on deaf ears. Father, but whatever is from you, Holy Spirit, may it resonate in our hearts. Father, I pray that the, that the meditation of my mind and my heart be, be acceptable to you this morning. So that when I speak and when I talk, Lord, that the people will catch. They will catch it. They will catch it. 
that Jesus, you are glorified by the Holy Spirit. And this morning, as you are sitting here, I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. And when you leave with nothing else, but you leave with this, the Holy Spirit is for you. The Holy Spirit is for you. So come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Can I just ask that there where you are? Just there where you are. Just allow him to speak to you. If you they call it the posture. It's Christianese. Uh, they call it the posture of receiving. But you hold out your hands like this. And you just receive. Just receive and say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I pray for revel- the spirit of revelation to come. Spirit of comfort. The spirit of power if you're going through something. Father, I pray that your spirit will come and rest upon us here this morning. Because as you are as gentle like a dove, as gentle as you are, as loving as you are, Lord, you are incredibly powerful. And today, I hope that we will see the manifestation of your power here this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's run. John 16, verse, verses 7 to 14. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus speaking, it is not to my advantage that I go away. But it is, uh, sorry, let me just say that again. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So the helper there in many translations is translated differently. Some are a comforter, some are a helper, some are even, uh, you know, an advocate. However, it is, it is the Greek word parakletos, okay? So it is, it, the word parakletos is actually part of two words. The first part is a para, which means close by, very close by. And then kletos is the one that means to call upon, to call upon. So the paracletos, the Holy Spirit, is someone who is on your side. He's always there. Hein preached last week that he's here on earth. He's here with you and he's by your side. He's always there for you to call upon him. Always there for you to call upon him. Verse 8. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So these are a couple of the things that the Holy Spirit does. Um, He will concerning sin, verse 9, because they do not believe in him. Verse 10. Uh, concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare all the things that are to come. So just a, just a quick thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through a whole lot of things just to settle a, a foundation and then we're going to get into the, the, the real thing I want to talk about. So one of the things I want to just clear out. So you have the Holy Spirit and then you have the Holy Ghost. You've heard that. Okay, so, so if you're heavy charismatic and you're newly saved and you were, oh, spook, spook, eat your field dung. It's like, that's, it's not that. It's not that. Okay, so the Holy Ghost it's actually just a, it, the difference is era. So in the olden days, in the, in the 1600s, when the, when the King James was written, they spoke about the Holy Ghost. Okay? So the Holy Ghost, that is how they spoke. How far out thou mouth the cow. And I want to wa- warn you guys, if you read the King James, you'll start speaking like that. Personal experience. And I love the King James as well. Okay? But the only difference is it's a different era. So obviously English has evolved. I don't know if you've noticed it. So we just call it the Holy Spirit. Can we settle on that? Same thing, different eras. Okay. Moving on. Okay. And like I said, I want to, I want to, the, guys, there's so much. It's like in this stack and I'm sharing with you so much. And I know we all need coffee. I know we're all hungry, so I'm not going to keep you too long, but I'm going to highlight the main thing. So when you hear the word Holy Spirit, the first thing that comes to mind, especially if you're newly saved, is like, who's this? Who is the Holy Spirit? So let me quickly run through a couple of things to you. First of all, he's not an emotion. He's not a a goosebumps thing. It's not that. He is a person. So let's quickly look at some of the attributes of of him. So firstly, he has a will. Okay? He gives gifts as, he's, as he was. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. He has a mind. Romans uh, 2, verse, verse 27. When he searches the minds and the thoughts of people, you need a mind to do that. Okay? He's got emotions. He can speak. Oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit can speak. Did you guys know that? The only problem is we must keep quiet to actually hear him. 
But I want to stand still on this point very quickly because there's a difference on how the Holy Spirit speaks to us in comparison on how the enemy speaks to us. I know we touched it a couple of weeks very quickly, but I want to highlight one thing. is that you have condemnation, which the enemy does, and then you have conviction, which the Holy Spirit does. So if you do something wrong, then the, the enemy comes and tells you, oh, you're useless, you, you're bad, and you're not doing well, and oh, you're such a failure. That's not the Holy Spirit. Okay. But the Holy Spirit comes and says, no, what you are doing is wrong. Repent and come back. Repent and come back. But something that the enemy does, and I want, to leave, want, I want to leave this with you guys, because it's extremely important, is that sometimes, not sometimes, many of the times, the enemy speaks in the first person, not in the third person. In other words, what am I saying? He won't say, you are useless, or you are pathetic. He says this in your mind, I am useless. I am pathetic. I am not worthy. Why do you think that is? Proverbs 3. Because he's trying to get you to say it. Because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Don't say it. The Bible talks about taking every thought captive and bringing it to the obedience of Christ. Okay. Don't allow the enemy to speak to you like that. And trying to, to buckle your vocal cords, buckle him out of your mind. Okay. So the Holy Spirit can teach. The Holy Spirit can be lied, lied to. Ask Ananias in Acts 5. He paid a very, very expensive price. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. Okay, how? If you gossip. Ephesians 4.13. You can actually resist the, the Holy Spirit when you are stiff-necked. Okay, when you are full of nonsense, you can resist the Holy Spirit. But you can also quench the Holy Spirit. How do you quench the Holy Spirit? By doing everything out of your own will. If you're doing it out of your own will and out of your own power, then you're quenching the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit can also be insulted. Okay? I don't believe that, uh, uh, that Christians can do this, but it is people who outrage the Holy Spirit. You can actually go and read that in Hebrews 10 verse 29. Then also, like I said, he's part of the Trinity. He was part of creation. He was there when Jesus was baptized. He was there when Jesus was, was born. And I'm not going to go into the whole Trinity thing because I did a smashing preach last week. And I want to encourage you guys, go and look at it. We've got a YouTube channel. He did really well. You will never look at the plug the same ever again. Okay. And, uh, but on the Trinity, I just want to say this. It's kind of like God the Father, okay? He, he's, like in, he's like in the planner, the big planner of plans. It's like, an other, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. He has the plans. Jesus is the one who is the architect. It's like, an, how are we going to put this together and make it work? The Holy Spirit, He's the one that makes it happen. He's the one that makes it happen. He's the one that brings salvation and all of that. But I'm not going to go into that. I'll go into that just now. And then obviously, He's God. He was actually called God in Acts 5 when Ananias lied to Him. They... Peter said to him, you have not just lied to the Holy Spirit, but you've actually lied to God. There is a, is a clear reference that the Holy Spirit is God. Okay? That obviously he has also godly attributes. He's omnipresent. Where, can I, where shall I go from, from your spirit? Where shall I flee? Psalm 139 verse 7. He's omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. Okay? That by the power of the Spirit, we get to do things. Even Jesus operated by the power of the Spirit. And he's omniscient. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Omniscient. But sounds right. Okay? So omniscient means all-knowing. All-knowing. Okay? He will teach you of the things and bring things to remembrance. That is in John 14, 26. And then, he's also the promise. And I'm getting to that. But I don't know if I told you guys. Have I told you guys that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is for you? I want, you, I want that to sink in. The Holy Spirit is for you. And you might think, yeah, but is he for me like in on my team? Yes. Yeah, but is he for me like in, is he mine? Like in, yes. In, in all different ways that you might think of what I'm trying to say. It's like in, the Holy Spirit is for you. Please let that sink in. So obviously, then ask yourself, man, what does he do? So obviously, we've learned he convicts, he confronts, um, he comforts, he, he guides us into all truth. Um, he's the one who puts Jesus on the, on the, on the main line. So the, the Holy Spirit highlights Jesus. Okay, so I just want to say, if you pray to the Holy Spirit, nowhere is it say that it is sin. 
Okay? Because the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Christ. Okay? So you technically you're actually talking to Jesus himself. Okay, so, so there's, there's nothing wrong with this. Not, there, there isn't actually just real evidence of it in Scripture that you will find where people pray to the Holy Spirit. Okay, can we, can we settle on that? So it's fine. You can pray to the Holy Spirit. But his main thing that he will do, he was always, always point to Jesus. That is why even here, we here at a lot of church, we are very concerned about the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. But our focus is Jesus. Because Jesus was the architect. He is the one who actually helped us into salvation and the Holy Spirit points us to Jesus so that we can get saved. Make sense? Then he also brings new birth. You can see that with, with the discussion that I had with, with Nicodemus that you need to be born again. And then there's this one thing about salvation that I want to talk to you guys about quickly. So in salvation, there's three parts. First, you need to believe Okay? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son for those who believe. So if you believe that Jesus is who He says He is, then you, then, you have, then you have the faith instilled into you. And right there, the Holy Spirit comes and He makes His residence within you. And when He comes and He makes that, that place within you, He immediately shows you stuff that, that might not be wrong. Oh, listen here. You, you're in trouble. You need a Savior. And right there, Confession comes. That's the second one. So confession then comes and says, man, I've messed up. I need a, I need a Savior. These are the things. And I'm going to be honest with you when I say, the Holy Spirit won't show you all the stuff that's wrong with you on that one day. You'll die. Because we all got issues. Okay. But the Holy Spirit will just, just place that enough within you to say, I need a Savior. And then obviously, as soon as you confess and says, Lord, I need you. I need you. In confession, it says, he who confesses and believes in his heart will be saved. Then you go into repentance. Because what is repentance? You turn from your wicked ways. It's a 180 turn. And you say, Lord, that stuff that you have shown me, I'm done with. And that is the new birth. That is why when you've turned from your sins, people come to you and say, yes, you're so different. What's, what's the difference? It's that. I could remember when I was at, at university, man, I was heavy on petrol, if you know what I mean. Hey, I was, I was not, a, a not a good kid, but when I gave my life to the Lord, and I actually came back to, for my third year, I was so changed. People actually said, yes, there's something different about you. It's like, yeah, let's go get some Ricky Lowe. Ricky Lowe was gone, man. He's gone. He's dead. That guy's buried in a pool somewhere in George. No more I who live, but Jesus who lives within me. Amen. So, so you receive the Holy Spirit. He makes His residence in you. He, he sets you apart. Your, your process of sanctification starts. Oh, great word. Sanctification. Sanctification just means that it is making holy. You have been set aside, so now you learn to walk with God. That is the process of sanctification. However, there's more. Because now we've been saved, but there's more. There's the workings of the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk to you guys about this because some people don't believe that the Holy Spirit works anymore. They don't. They, they, we call them cessationists. So what they believe is that, you know, prophecies is no more. Um, uh, you know, the, the apostolic gifting is no more. There's certain things that the, the Holy Spirit, some believe the Holy Spirit doesn't heal anymore. Hey, can I, can I just quickly see by, by a show of hands, who of you have been healed in this church? Do yourself a favor, look around. Does the Holy Spirit still work? Let's have a look. So they base their theory on 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8 to 10. It's the love chapter. From verse 8, it says, For love never ends. As for the prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge... They will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when, when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. So what they say that when the perfect comes, they believe this is the perfect word of God. And it is. And it is. But they, they, they relate that scripture that when we have the scripture, we don't need the Holy Spirit anymore. I think that's a very, very dangerous statement to say. Because if you go and look at that very same verse, are there still prophecies in the church? Yes. Are there still tongues in church? Yes, there are. 
are there still knowledge in church? Yes, there are. So these gifts are still going on in church. So what is the perfect talking about? It talks about when Jesus comes back. So why am I sharing this with you? Because I want to, from a biblical point of view, show you that the Holy Spirit still works today. He still works today. So if you have that mindset of the Holy Spirit doesn't care for me, we're not going to do anything in my life, I want to tell you you're wrong. He wants to change your life. He wants to. And we're going to get to how just now. So there are people, there are people who will for the rest of their lives, by their own choice, not have something that we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's a clear difference, and I'm going to show you guys just now, with salvation and with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing. The Israelites were baptized twice. The first time, when they left Exodus, they went through the Red Sea. When you go and read um, um, Hebrews 11, it talks about that was a baptism for them. But 40 years later, they went through another sea called the Jordan, where they were baptized a second time. And it is such a beautiful picture of us. So we, we were baptized into Jesus, our Lord, when we got saved. Okay? But there's another baptism that awaits us. And this baptism, ladies and gentlemen, is not just a baptism of Lodi Da. It is a baptism of power. It is a baptism that will enable you to actually step up and step into the calling God has for you. Because when the Israelites went through the Jordan, they were baptized into getting ready to take the land. They were getting ready. But I must say, there were three, three of the family members or three of the tribes that didn't go through. It was the west of Manasseh, Reuben, and Gad. They never went through. They stayed on the west side of the Jordan. But the others went through. So this morning, I really hope that when we give you guys the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit and, and have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you will come and actually have that boldness to step through into the Jordan and take what the God has called you for. Because I can tell you now, I can tell you now, guys, you can be baptized, you can be saved, but when you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit within you working, it might just be all in vain. Jesus is a very good example of this, as is, as is Paul as well. Jesus got baptized in water. The Holy Spirit came upon him. And it is from there that his miracles started. Paul, we're going to talk about him now as well, fell off his horse. He admitted that Jesus is Lord. Hey, when he said, Lord, who are you? And Jesus said to him, I'm the one you are persecuting. Then he said, then Jesus said to him, go, Ananias, Ananias will, will lay hands on you. And when Ananias came, there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Two separate events. You see that? Good. I actually jumped a bit ahead now. But two, three, three other examples quickly. You have Philip in Samaria. Philip went to Samaria, preached the gospel. People got saved. He left. The people in Jerusalem heard about it in Acts 8. People in Jerusalem heard about it. If I'm not, yeah, Acts 8. What did they do? They sent Peter and John to go and lay hands on them to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have Cornelius. Cornelius was a, was a soldier and he actually called upon the Lord and, and Peter went to him, preached the word, and the word came upon them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Cornelius already believed. That's why he called upon the Lord. And then you have the disciples who are in Ephesus. When Paul was walking around there, he actually bumped into, into the disciples who was baptized into John. John's baptism, the baptism of repentance. And then they said, oh, but the, the, the gift of the coming one that he spoke about was Jesus. They believed that. He was, they, they, they took on salvation. And then Peter laid hands on them and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. All of these things shows you, and I, and I want to make it clear for you, there's a, there's a difference. There's a difference. Now, when you are saved, like in, you know, these horror movies, you know, just before the plane hits the, the, the building where you're in, and you're like, just 10 seconds, like, Lord, I give my heart to you. Bah! Okay, you still go to heaven. Okay? Relax. <laughs> so, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a qualification for salvation. Neither is the baptism of water 
I need to make that clear as well. Because there are some people that believe you have to be baptized with water for you to be saved. It's, it's, it's not true. And please, I'm not going to go into it right now, so, but come and chat with me if you, if you are fussed with that. Okay? But the baptism of water is a baptism of obedience. So if you've never been baptized, we're going to have baptism in the next two weeks. So please make sure you come. Is that good? Awesome. Then I want to talk to you guys about the weird stuff. But I'm not, again, I'm not going to go too much into it. But you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like I said, God comes and He gifts as He wills. So when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, certain, you get gifts from the Holy Spirit. Not to edify yourself to, or to make you look good. That's very dangerous, friends. Very dangerous. Okay. But it is to uplift the body and for the common good. But I want to talk to you about this thing because every time or most of the times when people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they prophesied and they spoke in tongues. And I know tongues is a, is a bit of a controversial topic. And I want to talk to you guys about this quickly because just basically saying there's actually just two types of tongues. The first one is for public ministry. Okay, public ministry is mainly for a sign. If you are here and, you've, and it's the first time that you hear about God and you first time you hear about Jesus and, and someone is suddenly talking in a tongue, that is a sign. This tongue can either, be, can either be in a language that we understand or a language that we do not understand. However, in all of those two situations, you will always find that there will be someone that the Holy Spirit stirs to interpret it. We've had it. We've had it in this church. And I want to encourage you, come to Thursday night prayer, half past five, because that's where things happen. Okay, so when we have that, as soon as we have a tongue, we stop the meeting, and then we wait for the Holy Spirit to bring the word. Okay, so that's for public use. The second one is for personal use. Okay, so the personal use is when you, is, is when you pray and you edify yourself. You pray in the Spirit. I like to say rather it's praying in the Spirit. You edify yourself. But it's also a prayer of intercession. Okay. How many of you had it? And you might have heard the stories where suddenly you would sit and you have this urge within your man, I need to pray. You might just need to pray or you need to pray for someone specific. And when you've done that, later on that afternoon you heard, yes, this guy's been in a massive car accident. But nothing happened to him. That's a prayer of intercession. That is the gift of tongues. And I want to say two things. Firstly, there's a thing that goes around churches saying that you must pray in tongues to show that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is not true. Can we settle that quickly? Uh, D.L. Moody, great theologian. Great theologian. Never prayed in tongues. So you cannot say that this guy didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit. Another guy, Billy Graham. Guy never prayed in tongues. Have you heard him preach? Now, you cannot tell me that the power of the Spirit is not upon him. So it is not a qualification. However, it is something to be desired. Like prophecy, prophecy, the Bible Paul says, desire that the most because it uplifts the whole congregation, but also praying in the Spirit because it strengthens your, your relationship with him. Okay. Did I say? I don't know if I said it. I don't know if I said it. The Holy Spirit is for you. Guys, if, if, if I'm hitting a lot of theological points here, but I want you to get this. The Holy Spirit is for you. You who call yourself a Christian. So how do we, how do we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, by hearing the word. Secondly, the laying on of hands. And then lastly, which is quite important, see so if you ask. Luke eleven thirteen says, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to him who asks. You're asking. How do you keep the Holy Spirit with you? Because what many times happen is, if, if, if you're a Christian, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you cause nonsense, the Holy Spirit pulls back. Have you ever noticed that? It's kind of like God is just not present in your life. It's like, what happened? I've lost it. So the thing is, he's parakletos. He's the one that's next to you, that's always with you. But if you're going into places, friends, where you're not supposed to be, he's going to go quiet. He's going to go quiet. Don't allow that. Don't allow that. 
because he loves you so much. He doesn't want you to be in those places. He doesn't want you to do those things. But thanks be to God, we've, we've got this gift called repentance, where we can go back to God and say, Lord, you know what? I'm stuffed up. I'm sorry. Please come back. And then listen to him. Listen to him. Another way is to have fellowship with other believers. And we, we hit this very hard, guys. Have a life group. Join a life group. Why? Because it keeps you accountable. People keeping you accountable. They care for you, man. Man, we've got life groups here. I'm too scared to go. They care too much. Another way, and this is the last two, it's very important. I want to share this with you. It's obedience. Acts 5, verse 32. And are we witnesses to these things? And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. If He tells you to do something, do it. No matter how uncomfortable it is, if He tells you to go to a life group, guys, take it from me. It's awkward. You rock up at the guy's place. They don't know me from a bar or so. But you said, hey, we've got one come and go, and that's Jesus. So let's praise Him. If you go with anything, go with that. But obey Him. And the last one, and that is why I say, desire praying in tongues. I believe it is really a gift for every Christian. Praying in the Spirit, Jude 1 verse 20, it says, But you, beloved, building yourself up in the most holy of faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. And I want to quickly share with you my, my bit of experience with tongues. Because I was, man, I got so angry when people prayed in tongues when I was a young Christian. And I was like, <laughs> you know, when you're young, you do stupid stuff. So, so I would say, Lord, look, look, 1 Corinthians 14, look, look. It must be interpretation. And, and I, I went all crazy. But there was this one day, we were at, a, we were at a, um, a, a student's worship thing. It was, it was called Campus Harvest. And I was there, and I believed all these things. And I said, you know what, Lord? I'm just going to lay everything down. I'm, I'm going to yield to you. I'm going to yield to you. And while we were in the praise and worship, man, it was so awesome because... I had some guys at the back of me asking me, hey, what are they saying? It's like, Jesus is king. Yeah, and we all went crazy. So now we, when, you, when, you, when you glorify God, there's just something that happens. Something that happens. And before I knew it, I was praying in tongues. And I was released from it. So you don't judge people who doesn't pray in tongues. Many of us are already in the river. The river is flowing, but not all of us has yielded to it yet. And this morning, we're going to give you guys the opportunity to yield. To allow the Holy Spirit to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Guys, have I told you? The Holy Spirit is for you. The Holy Spirit is for you. A last important thing. Friends, the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. It cannot. I think I just... I jumped it a bit, but in John 14, 7, that even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him, you know him, for he dwells within you, and he will be in you. Friends, many of you can sit here and tell me, you know what, Philip, being filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot explain it. You try and explain it. That's why the world sees it as absolute foolishness. But we know it is God working in us. But the world cannot receive him and I want to tell you this morning if you are still in the world can you please make that change because God has got so much more for you it is crazy no mind can think no, no heart can see what, what the Lord has in store for you so can I just ask there where you guys are now just to bow our heads just bow our heads just bow our heads and you, you, you might have heard me talk about the Holy Spirit and, and what He does, and He's so for us, and, and He wants this. He's our best friend. He, he desires to be with us. But I want to give this opportunity this morning that if you have never, never given your heart to Jesus, you have never come and say, you know what, Lord? I believe. I confess. I repent. If you've never done that, can I ask you, can I ask, and, and we are not here to, to shame you. 
We are not here to embarrass you. We are here to celebrate with you. But if you have never done that, can I ask you to come to the front? To be so bold, to come to the front. We would love to pray for you. Is there anyone here this morning? Come Holy Spirit, I pray. Stir our hearts. Come Lord, there we go. Well done guys, well done. Is there anyone else? Well done sir. Come. Is there anyone else who would like to make this commitment? Because you cannot without the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you that. You cannot without the Holy Spirit. Is there anyone else? Can we pray with him? Man, this is exciting stuff. So you just pray after me. Holy Spirit, thank you for your conviction. This morning, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray, come Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Teach me and lead me for the rest of my life. Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well done, guys. Can I ask you guys to stand with me this morning? As we go into a time of praise and worship to our King. And like I said, I'll give opportunity just now for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So just there we are. I'm just going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus and the finished work that He has done for us. But I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come down onto your people. Come, Lord, like a mighty rushing wind. Come and fill your people. Lord, I pray that, that no one in this building will walk out different. No one. No one. No one. The Holy Spirit is for you, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Spirit.